Hello and welcome to another Overlord lore video and today we will take a look at more Lovecraftian references and elements in Overlord. Also I already made a video collecting all sorts of references to other media such as Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings and of course other anime and you will find a link to this video in the description. And before we start let me thank my Patreons for supporting this channel and for choosing today's topic. I also have done an entire video on Great Cthulhu and how deep ones could be mating with humans, which is of great interest to Demiurg, already, so link to it in the description. And let's start with Huster, the king in yellow. And considering that Pandora's actor fits not only the color scheme, but also has changed himself into Einzel Gon, the sorcerer king, he fits all of these criteria rather well. Hastur is also supposed to live more or less imprisoned near Aldebaran, a star, and Pandora's actor is more or less imprisoned, or rather hidden away, in the treasury vault, which is separated from the rest of the guild base. Essentially by an infinity, you need to teleport into this treasury vault. So again, another parallel fits. Hester's default appearance is Octopoid, or rather that of his avatar is, and Pandora's actor, during his first appearance, had changed into Tabuda Smaragdina, the squid ward of Einzul Gon, and like Hester, Pandora's actor can take many forms. But instead of his avatar being known as the king in yellow, he wears yellow by default and masquerades as the sorcerer king. Hester is also seen as the patron deity of artists, writers, and in essence any creative types, which fits the actor part in Pandora's name quite well. Hester is also said to be able to influence the minds of those who had seen the yellow sign, aka you, and Pandora's actor, as a greater doppelganger, can read the minds of anyone around him in order to behave like the person he impersonates as the others would expect them to behave around them. Furthermore, artists under the spell of Huster work tirelessly to recreate and share the yellow sign in order to further the power and goals of Huster. And I fear personally that this part of the story has been outsourced and bound to Nea Baraya, who will tell everyone how great the Sorcerer King is. Next in line we have the Dark Young, and they are a pretty obvious reference, just like the spell Iye Shubnigurav, and as the offspring of the Black Goat, they usually take sacrifices on behalf of their mother, which is also how Splat happened. Supposedly every man killed had his soul sacrificed to the mother of a thousand young, which would confirm that Overlord is a part of the mythos itself. Also the guild in and of itself is like an alien civilization, far too advanced and strange that mortal minds could understand it. And next in line we have faulty rituals and a certain book. And one of the most iconic items in the Lovecraftian mythos is the Necronomicon, which had been translated and mistranslated numerous times. And now the informations and rituals described in it are flawed or incomplete. Invoking them will lead to disaster. So failed rituals are a thing not only in the mythos, because it is speculated by me and many other overlord enthusiasts that the dragon emperor is responsible for all of the Yggdrasil players, and more precisely their world items appearing into the new world since he failed to understand that Yggdrasil is not a separate dimension but a simulated reality in a much bleaker and much less magical one, thus accidentally granting all of the Yggdrasil beings and their world items the power he sought by unintentionally leaving the Dragon Lord's own magic, wild magic, twisted, deformed and much less useful than before, and a century later these summoned creatures would drive his own kind to near extinction, before they themselves 
collapsed into nothingness after a brutal civil war. So fate or not entirely correct rituals play a big part in all of this. And of course the inability to wrap one's mind around a greater reality is also a continuous theme throughout the mythos. And while not directly related to all of these events, the nameless book of spells feels like a much more direct reference to the Necronomicon, or even the book of Abon. And speaking of this book, it is another powerful artifact in the mythos, detailing the journey of a powerful wizard by the name of Ibon, and with Fluter Paradine being given the Book of the Dead, it could not only transform him into an Elder Lich, but also serve as his personal journal. Now let's move on to another thing that could be taken more or less entirely out of the mythos, because an undead cult, of Zurnon that is, launching a ritual to turn a city into the undead, all in the name of their god of death, seems like the archetypical Lovecraftian cult, especially because references to the actual great old ones, or rather Soshana, are few and far in between, with lots of ambiguity. And of course something went wrong and Einzel Gorn shows up, but since he tries to hide his identity as Momon, now the hero of humanity and sole guardian of life inside the Sorcerer Kingdom, even the wider population, who had been saved from an undead horde by an even more powerful undead overlord, is now blissfully unaware of what truly happened. And this is another part of the mythos, corruption, madness, and the inability to grasp complete reality of things, which is oftentimes described as blissful ignorance. And the only protection mankind has against the cruel reality of the universe. And Nea represents a sort of victim to all of this corruption and madness Ainz has to offer. She now follows the very being that is responsible for all of the suffering and death she hates, including that of both of her parents and much of her fellow men. And she is now praising the very cause for this disaster as the cure, as justice, and as her personal deity. But thankfully, her mind didn't grasp the full reality of the situation, keeping her blissfully unaware of the greater horrors she encounters on a daily basis. And a similar journey, albeit with a considerably worse outcome to the persons involved, could be seen in the Invaders of the Great Tomb which is like exploring early A. Don't do it. And they started with a simple mission, to explore the ruin, take out the treasures and report back. But while all of the adventurers were entering the home of Ein Solgon, they slowly start to realize against what they were up. And the more they understand about what Ein Solgon is capable of and where they truly are, the more they lost their sanity and hope. And even then they couldn't understand the perspective of this eldritch being hailing from another dimension. And in an attempt to increase its own knowledge, this undead overlord drove Robert Dyke mad and twisted his mind into a cruel, perverted reflection of his formerly sacrosant belief by making him worship a stone. And of course, the sheer terror Shalti inflicted upon Arsha has to be mentioned here after revealing how hopeless it all is, and that she is still underground, despite flying to a forest only to run into a barrier, and by finally revealing her true leech-like form, Arsha has been driven mad, before her mind collapsed, since even a glimpse of the true horror of the true nature of things, in this case Shaltir, overwhelmed her to the point of passing out. And finally, a few text phrases from one of Overlord's outros, Silent Solitude, is very, very clear on one thing. That Einzel Gorn is more or less a stand-in for at least a fragment of Azatov, the blind idiot god. And Azatov is supposed to be dreaming our reality from the smallest insignificant atoms to the greatest stars and monsters in the universe. And when, not if, 
when he wakes, we won't. So this entire reality of Overlord might solely be dependent on Ein's old goal. And with that said, I say thank you very much for watching and special thanks to Dash 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 Bert Gaye Ben C Chrissy Sia Death is Mercy Dystopia Dystopia the Second Feral Shivan Guy with Dead Head Hector Marino Hoss Huster Jacob G Jana B Jason Kratos Chromius Legendarius Lelouch V Britannia with a mustache Lexus Fox Lord Nishikian Rai Lord Touch Me Mr. Shoes Michael R Michael Y O'Kill Paddy Pantom Primus Eleven Shadow Lightning Wolf Shrine Keeper Texas Deer The Orc Warboss Rocket Smasher T.E. Wang The Shark Eye Venture Fanatic Wilhelm And Zonagon Thanks guys Anyway, have a nice day And I hope to see you all again soon on my next video Over and out